So we're back working on this 2002 F350 with a 7.3 power stroke. It has a problem with the injectors on the right bank, bank one, and I've got the valve cover partially removed to inspect this connector. And it looks like it's unseated. There's a gap here. So I'm going to unplug it and inspect the terminals on it, see if they're compromised. Sorry, I didn't see that the camera wasn't getting that. Yeah, this connector right here. And we're going to reattach it after inspecting it if there's nothing wrong with it. And do another buzz test without starting it. And see if it passes. So I managed to weasel the valve cover out of there. It does come out. Um, looking at this connector and it looks pretty good. And this connector inside here, you can see now that it's seated. So there's a trick to using a, uh, a quarter to put a wedge underneath here to keep this lock from releasing and the connector from falling down. So uh, Diesel Tech Ron, may he rest in peace, uh, came up with this solution. Unless it's got the updated harness inside the valve cover here and it, this one appears to not have so we're gonna do that little trick I don't know if I'm gonna use a quarter but I might use a a 65 thou washer that's the same size as a quarter how's that sound well I put the uh, quarter in there I tried to use a washer but I couldn't cut it the right width the quarter works perfectly fine so if you use a Canadian quarter it's not 25 cents it's only like 20 cents so uh, but that didn't work. Uh, the terminals look okay, but they could be compromised inside. I can't see up inside that cover gasket. So I'm going to go to town and get a new cover gasket. It's setting a 1291 bank one injection short to ground or battery voltage. So it, it faintly fires the injectors on that bank when you try it. I'm going to set it up and do it one more time. So I'm going to do a functional test of injector buzz test. I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up, but should be able to hear it. Fires all. <coughs> Okay, so let's try this again. I'm going to do an injector buzz test. It fires all eight injectors, followed by each one in the cylinder firing order, or no, in the uh, number firing order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it aborted the test, it didn't fire all eight. And you could hear when it was firing the first injector, it was quite muffled. So I'm gonna get that harness and I'm gonna replace the harness. I'm gonna test the glow plugs before I go to town in case I need a glow plug in there too. So if you look at the injector harness here, the four pins on the outside, two on this end and two on this end, the larger ones are for the glow plug. So I got a headlight connected to power and when I touch the glow plug terminal going into the connector there, it should light the headlight. So I got the headlight sitting here. I'm going to touch number one, number three, huh, number five is open, seven is good, but number five is open. So that's number seven. Number five, number three, number one. I wonder if it'd be proactive to change all four on this side considering the amount of work that's involved. Let's see what they have in stock. So here's a new gasket set from Dorman. Some guys might not like Dorman, but one thing that they did do was eliminate that internal connector in here. So in my opinion, if you don't have a connector, you'll never have a problem with it. It's only got the external connector. Um, we're going to go ahead and replace all the glow plugs on this bank. They're 25 bucks a piece, so that's cheap insurance in my opinion. The amount of labor involved to change the glow plugs is basically worth it in my opinion. It also comes with a replacement pigtail for the harness on the outside. 
Uh, but I'm going to check the pin drag on the terminals and we'll only put that in if we have to. Well, there's the harness reinstalled with the valve cover gasket. Make sure these are all clipped in. These uh, glow plugs are a bit of a challenge to plug in. You have to push them down. Make sure they're seated. Make sure the wires aren't pinched under the valve cover. Now we're going to do an injector balance test or a buzz test again. So I'm going to go through the injector buzz test again. And hopefully it passes now. Starting now. Well, we still got the same problem, so it wasn't the harness after all. Oh well. So it set the 1291 code, so we're going to try that other Fickham. Uh, it's inside the wheel well, if I'm not mistaken, so he's got a used one here. I think that his original one is still in the truck, but we're going to try this other one. So this hasn't been out in any time soon. I had to cut the bolt there and the front bolt. The Fickham lives up here. Nice and convenient. Looking at this spot here where it rubs on the fender. Looks okay. So I'm going to plug in the new used Fickham and, and redo the test. Okay, so I'm going to clear the code. Codes menu. Clear codes. Yes. Continue exit, make sure they're gone, maybe I didn't wait long enough after before hitting exit, okay they're gone, functional test, injector buzz test, now you won't be able to hear it over my furnace running, and my compressor, That was all eight. Well, let's install that Fickham and then put the valve cover back on. So I got the used Fickham bolt in now. They all sound the same now, before the right bank was muffled. Yay, no codes. Let's put this thing back together. Okay, so it's back together. Let's see if it starts and runs. It's not very good. Well, let's see what codes it's generating. Well, let's see what codes we got. <laughs> Thirteen, sixteen. That's a different code. I thought we had 1291. Let's see what it was before. 1291, bank one injector short to ground. 1316, oh, that's the generic code for PCM has detected that the injector driver module has set fault codes. All right. Okay. Let's clear the codes. Sounds like it's running on half the cylinders. Functional.
functional test, injector buzz test. <laughs> Isn't that special? So did it give me a defective IDM? It worked before. Keeps aborting the test. Oh, brother. I have no idea if the status of this IDM that he gave me is a used one. But you saw it pass the test when I had it apart when I had the valve cover off and I'm sure that the valve cover didn't short out. Well, let's see if we run it again and see what codes it set. Telling the contribution test. Yeah, I'll test the board. Well, it's possible that that injector driver module that he gave me is defective. I'll talk to him. So we're back working on this O2 Super Duty 7.3. For the IDM problem and the injector short on bank one and I've identified the terminal 24 is the 115 volt feed and 21 and 8 and 20 and 6 are the injector control circuits now I just came back to this tonight and I've got the test ohmmeter between pin 24 which is the 115 volt feed and 26 which is the check uh, which is the ground and it shows 14,000 ohms let's change the res resolution 13,200 ohms so and I've got the same reading across every one of these and I, if I unplug the injector connector on the harness which I'm going to do right now I'm sure that goes open so I've got the cat pipe off and this is the injector connector and if I unplug this I gotta get two hands here to do this now with that injector connector harness connector unplugged and that's a new harness in there it now shows 14,000 so there's a short in the wiring but a few minutes ago I didn't have a short and I ran the buds test and it aborted the test so there's a connector in between I wonder if that connector is green and corroded. We're going to look for that connector. So here is the schematic. There's the IDM. There is connector 110. And I've got to find the location of it. It's under the hood someplace. Probably on the inner fender there on the left side. And I've got this connector unplugged and the short goes away. Or the short is still present. So that means the problem's in in the wiring somewhere. So here's a wiring diagram on Identifix and it's connector 110 we're looking for. So we're going to go to the location of that connector. There's a bunch of connectors on the left inner fender. I got the left inner fender skirt out. Hmm. Maybe it's over on this side. C101. No, it's G101. C110. A coordinate A4. Oh, well, that's beautiful. That's it right there. Okay, let's see what it looks like. <coughs> so it's on the right left valve cover connector face. Come on, you can load. Oh, yes, that's a big bulkhead connector let's have a look at that so I found that connector it lives underneath the air induction box down here 
there's a big bulkhead connector on top of the left valve cover. I moved the connector while recording the resistance and you can see it went open. So I think the wires just rubbed through on the valve cover right in this area here. Oh, the stool slipped out from it. I'm going to take this air induction box out of here and this uh, air induction out of the way. So all I did was grab this harness and move it like that. And now it's not changing at all. So I'm going to take this connector apart and see if there's any compromised terminals in it. It's not changing at all. But it's open now and it was it was shorted partially shorted the ground. Hmm. So originally I had a short between pin 24, which is this pin here, and pin 26, which is a ground. And pin 24 is OG. What is that? Orange? I thought orange was ORN, but looking under this connector, I've got it apart, it looks pristine inside, but the underside of this connector where the wires were laying on the valve cover is suspicious. Like this wire here is rubbed from vibrating on the valve cover. See where it was rubbing on the valve cover right there. And I wonder if that's enough to cause the issue. This wire here looks like it's rubbed through the insulation as well. But that green with an orange trace, I gotta figure out which wire that is. I couldn't recreate the problem by pushing back on the connector again. But I'm going to plug the connector back in and, and lift it off the valve cover and try a buzz test again. Okay, so I got the IDM back installed. I got a rag between the valve cover and the harness where the wires looked like they were rubbing. I got the valve cover gasket plugged in on the right side. And I'm going to key on, battery charger on it. I'm going to try injector buzz test again. Sounds good. Survey says no codes. Let's try it one more time. I'm going to set the camera up over at the vehicle so you can listen to it. Okay, I'm going to start the bug test again. I'm going to fix those wires at that connector and then start it and run it see how it runs. So I do see the problem. You see that orange wire in there? See how it's rubbed through right at the end of my thumb? That's the main feed wire. The pin 24, 115 volts to the injectors on the left bank. If that shorts the ground, it takes down all the four injectors and it sets multiple fault codes. Okay, we're going to see if this thing will start now. Key on, glow plug cycle. That's much better. See, he's got an ABS light on. Maybe we'll scan it and see what's up with that. So, multiple problems. Valve cover gasket, glow plug, and wiring harness rubbed through on the left valve cover. I found two wires there, I'll show you what they look like. So there's the orange wire, and there was another wire in here that was compromised too. So we fixed both of those, put new sections of wire in.